Welcome back. As you can see, I've been busy doing a lot of wiring. Honestly, I wanted to get a lot of this done to really check out the final values of some of these components. And a little spoiler, I did wire up both channels and listen to it and it sounds really good. So I think we're on the right track with the build as I'm gonna outline it today. The schematic's been updated a little bit. I did realize I made a fairly major goof on the original schematic. I was initially going to use a different, one of these type combo tubes that used 12 volt heaters, but I was unable to find a transformer that had the right voltage with a 12 volt winding so I went with this 6BM8 and I neglected to double check the pin numbering and unfortunately when I got this thing partially wired up and didn't have any cathode voltage and was scratching my head I realized that I had the pin numbers wrong so Hopefully you, you all are waiting for me to finish this, to start building one of these, so you won't make the same mistake. So I fixed that problem. The wiring was a real ugly from having to move pins all around from what I had initially decided. So after I listened to it, I tore all that wiring out and rewired it in a more logical way. One of the things I mentioned too, that if this is your first amplifier, you might want to start out with a larger chassis. This is a pretty small chassis. As you can see, everything fits in here real tight. The other thing going on with this amp is these type of tubes that have a triode and a pentode into the same envelope, every pin's used for something. And so you quickly start running out of tag points. Ideally, you would have a seven tab terminal strip for each tube so you could pull each pin out to a tag strip point and then work from there. With this we're limited to one ground and four tabs so then we have to decide which ones are the most important to pull out to their own tab. And then you start looking at the schematic and you realize that this one's got a lot of stuff going on on it. This one does too, because you've got this resistor, a capacitor, and another resistor. Plus, this is a value we want to experiment with. So we want to be able to easily replace this resistor. The other thing we are going to experiment with is this section here. Right now, we simplified the schematic to just use a unbypassed resistor for the cathode bias on the triode. But I want to experiment with some, um, like a diode resistor combo. Maybe even try putting a 1.2 volt rechargeable battery here. And so I wanted to make sure that these pins were pulled out to, or these points were pulled out to a tab as well. So, what we ended up doing is this terminal here on the end, or this on the end here is probably easier to see, it comes over here to, it's a little hard to see, but there's a 1K grid stopper right here in the corner. And let me zoom in there. You can see it right there, that it goes from pin 3, grid stopper, up to that terminal strip. One thing that's important to do to know about grid stoppers is they need to be as close to the pin as possible. So you want to jam the resistor up against the um, tube socket pin and then have the longer lead coming over, the, over to the tab. Okay, this is the 470k resistor that comes over to ground. This one right here. And so that takes care of the grid. 
Then all we have to do is hook the coupling capacitor, which is this guy right here, across those two tabs. Okay, so the next pin we pull out is going to be, yeah, pin number six. That's the plate of the triode. And we're pulling that out because we want to make sure that we can easily access this 300K feedback resistor for playing with the value of this. It might end up being anywhere from 180K to 500K, depending on what the amp sounds like and what we want it to sound like with our speakers. So, the plate's pulled up here. The next tab that we pull up is going to be pin number 8, which is the cathode of the triode. And again, that's going to be where we play with this component here, which will go between here and ground. And then the last pin is pin number 9, which is the plate of the triode. And like I said, there's lots of stuff that's all connected to this guy. Plus, we want to have access to this feedback resistor. So then we have some pins that we can't pull out to this terminal strip. One of them is pin 1, which is the grid on the input tube. This right here. And we've got to ground a 1 mag and get the center of the volume control to it. So what I did was, let's zoom in here and see if you can see this. It's going to be a little difficult. Okay, right under here, there's a one meg resistor that goes between this number one pin and this ground. Then I brought down this shielded cable from the volume control and stripped it pull the shield over to ground, and then the center pin is soldered to the other side of this resistor lead that goes over to pin one. This isn't something, this isn't something that I know I'm not going to be messing with, and so I was fine just kind of bur burying this down inside the tube where you, it's really hard to get to because it's not something I'm going to be messing with. The other thing that we have to deal with is hooking up the... ultralinear tap and then so what I did is I took this lead off of the transformer and I soldered a resistor to the end of it and then put some heat shrink tubing on it and then this is going to connect to pin number seven and just be soldered on there like you can see it is over on this side. So that takes care of everything that we've kind of soldered on underneath here. The other thing I did was I pulled the B plus wire that comes off the transformer to the plate of the output tube and I soldered it to the lower hole in this terminal strip so that this is the hot wire coming off the transformer. And that way this can just connect over to the plate. Okay, next to what we did was we soldered together a little thing that looks like this, where we got this big 470 resistor and soldered this 100 UF capacitor across it. And then this gets soldered in from the ground. over to pin 2. And that completes this part of the circuit. The next thing we had to do was we needed to connect the, the coupling cap that goes from the plate of the input tube to the grid of the output tube or input section to the output section. And so it connects across from this end to the other and that couples the 
plate of the input tube to the grid of the output tube. Then you can see this little, little resistor right here. This is our shade feedback resistor that goes from the plate to the plate. As you can see, it's right here on the top where it's real easy to change out if we want to. The next component that we added was the little resistor right there. That's the cathode resistor for the input section of the triode, which is this little guy right here. And as you can see, that's fairly easy. these two pins are fairly easy to get to if I wanted to play with putting a diode across there or put some wires and pull these over to try a rechargeable battery or some other things for, for doing the bias on the input tube. The last thing we had to do was bring this uncoupled power to the plate of the input triode with this 100K resistor. And as you recall in the last power supply video, this is our little decoupling part of the amplifier over here with the two 43UF 350 volt capacitors and these dropping resistors. And so then we were able to just run this 100K resistor from here to this tag point, from here to this tag point, and that uh, gives us the power that we need and the plate load resistor for the plate of the input tube or the triode, whichever one you want to call it. So that pretty much got all of this wired up. One thing I did figure out was the initially, initially I thought I was going to be using a 33, I mean a, a yep, 330 ohm resistor here and that ended up biasing this tube too hot. I ended up with almost 40 milliamps of dissipation through the tube and so I tried some different, played around with some different values. I'm going to link a website that has a really good way of calculating up what these resistors are and what percentage of the load of the tube you're putting on it by just plugging in some data and make sure you use a 7 watt tube because that's what this is. And I ended up with a, a 470 ohm. Your individual tube might be it needs something a little different. I tried some of the new EH tubes and found that they're actually biased a little too hot even with this resistor. So you might need to go to you know a 520 or a 560 ohm or something like that to get the milliamp draw across this tube down into the low 30s. And the reason we need to do that is this transformer is only rated at 71 milliamps. And even though a full wave rectifier is a little easier on the current draw, we still don't want to overheat this transformer. And we don't want to push the tubes outside of their spec either. So if we bias this around 30 to 32 milliamps, that gets us at 64 this section draws about 1.5 milliamps, so that's another three. And then calculating it for a little losses or whatever, that's, you know, this is 65 milliamps, and then it's 71. We want to be a little short of what the transformer is. If you're, if you're bumping on the door of, you know, 70, even maybe 75, you'll probably be fine. But you don't want to go, you don't want to go over that. So, you know, be prepared to, like, check this voltage. And the way you do this is you connect your ground wire up here and then with no tubes and without any of this wiring when I had just done the power supply right here and right here I was seeing right at 300 volts and you'll see almost 300 volts here too because there's no load on the system yet. And once I get the tubes in and got this bias down 
to where I had about 15 volts measured here. This is where this is the point where you'll measure the 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 bias on the cathode of the output tube, and you want to you know with this resistor you want to see about 15 volts. If you're seeing 18 volts or something like that, you may need to raise the value of this resistor, but. So you want to check it at this pin on both tubes and then you also want to check it here and here and you should be seeing about 1.3 volts. And that's on the cathode of the input tube. So again, with it all running, you want to see about 225 here you'll probably see about 220 here on the plate you want to see about 14 to 15 volts here on the cathode of the output tube then you want to see about 1.3 volts on the cathode of the input tube and then here which is the plate of the input tube you're going to see about 100 volts. Might be a little less, but it's going to be right around there. And these voltages don't have to be exact. You just want them in the ballpark. So that's pretty much wi finishing wiring up the tubes and the tube sockets. And at that point, the amps, once you've checked the voltage, we're ready to put it on the scope and start looking at some things. One of the things I want to show you in the next video is we're going to put the amplifier on the scope and one channel I'm going to leave off the shade feedback resistor and have it in place on the other channel. And I want to show you the difference in what that feedback resistor does to the amplifier and the quality of the sound that comes out of it. So. We're going to save all that for the next video. I'm going to solder all this stuff back in, get the input all back together, and we'll put, throw it on the scope and start seeing what it looks like. Hope you're enjoying this series. If you are, please subscribe to my channel, like the video, and we'll see you on the next video.